Would you all please stand for prayer and please assume a position of prayer most comfortable for you. Surely I've turned myself to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright to him who has originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not from among the polytheists. Surely my prayer and my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and this am I commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant, and I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. And I ask protection against all of my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me into the best of morals, for none can guide into the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and indecent morals but thee. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. For surely thou art praised and magnified. O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praised and magnified. I mean. Assalamualaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet each and every one of you in the greeting words of peace. Of Assalamualaikum. On behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the brothers and sisters of the Nation of Islam, we would like to thank and welcome each and every one of you for joining us here on this powerful Sunday morning worship service. For those that are here in Mas Mariam, this is our headquarters. For those that are listening via internet, via webcast from across the country, to the various mosques and study groups, we welcome each and every one of you. Give yourselves a round of applause. A special welcome, special welcome to all of the sisters that have traveled across this country to come from the MGT Vanguard Retreat. We thank you and we welcome you to your home, your headquarters. Welcome home, Sisters of the Nation of Islam. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes, and our Savior has arrived. He says, I want to teach you who you are. So many people have been made blind, deaf, and dumb to the knowledge of God. Why are they made blind, deaf, and dumb to the knowledge of God? He says, because they are blind, deaf, and dumb to the knowledge of self. How can they know God, he asks. But Allah is here and has risen up in your midst by the power and wisdom of the Supreme, who is a man, to teach you the knowledge of self, the knowledge of God, and the knowledge of the devil. In the Holy Quran, in the surah entitled Saab, it says, Praise be to Allah, whose is whatsoever in the heavens and whatsoever is in the earth. And to him be praise in the hereafter. And he is the wise, the aware. In Psalms 100, it says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his people. We are the sheep in his pasture. For he is good and his love endures forever. Brothers and sisters, as we move forward in our program, I'm humbled and I'm honored as I present and bring forward to you, as I remember Sister Sandy's words from yesterday on her biograph. She says that on the paper that she's a writer a composer, she's a soldier, she's a student, she's a warrior for truth, freedom, justice, and equality. She is a mother of four, but a mother to all of us. 
She is a believer and the wife of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, help me to bring to the podium Mother Tynetta Muhammad. If we'll wait for just a few more minutes. How's everybody feeling? If you all could have a seat just for a minute. We will wait on greatness. We will wait for an example. Brothers and sisters, as we wait on Mother Tynetta, I'm going to bring before you Student Minister Fontaine Muhammad. Please give Brother Fontaine a round of applause. Assalamu alaikum. Dear and beloved sisters and brothers, it is such an honor and a privilege to stand before you live from Mosque Maryam. We begin in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, the All-Wise, the True, and the Living God who came to us in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad. I further bear witness and I thank Allah, and no matter how long I'm blessed to live in Allah's magnificent creation, I could never thank Allah enough for our beloved leader, teacher, and guide. We knew him in his early infancy as that, but we must know today, brothers and sisters, he is Allah's messenger Messiah to each and every one of us, and even more, we thank Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. If I lived for an extended period of time once again, I flat out could never thank Allah enough for his extension of mercy and grace in the most beautiful man that I've ever met personally in my life, the man who raised me from death and gave me life, literally raised me from a pit of hell. I could never thank Allah enough for his extension of mercy and grace, our beloved leader, teacher and guide, father over the house. We thank Allah for the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet each and every one of you, praise be to Allah. I greet each and every one of you once again in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, you look extremely beautiful today and to be in the sight of such beauty is indeed an honor and a privilege. I'm gonna get right on down to nation business, brothers and sisters. This portion of our program is simply dedicated to the principle of charity or zakat. I'm gonna begin in this way. The Bible and Holy Quran teaches us about giving in tithes and offerings. Charity, brothers and sisters, is a pillar of faith and a principle of action. Each and every one of us are duty-bound to be charitable. Even in an hour like this, charity is incumbent upon each and every one of us, and you should already know that your precious time is the greatest charity that one could give, so you've already been charitable in and of yourself just for being here. But I want to remind us, brothers and sisters, that charity is a self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice. This is imposed on you by you. And therefore, charity should be given solely out of a love for Allah, out of the desire to do good to and for Allah's creation. Does that make sense? Everyone all right? All right. Brothers and sisters, we should also keep in mind simply that we reap what we sow. And our charity enriches our spirit and draws us ever closer to Almighty God, Allah. Allah constantly speaks, brothers and sisters, in the Holy Quran of the believing men and the believing women, the sacrificing men and the sacrificing uh, women, the praying men and the praying women, the charitable men and the charitable women. And we must know that Allah is sufficient for all of us, brothers and sisters, if we put our complete faith and trust in him, Allah will suffice all of our needs. I want to remind us as we began to ask our brothers and sisters from the Ministry of Finance to make their way to the front, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan reminds us very boldly, very forthrightly, that our blessings, our well-being, our good fortune is not based on the current economic realities of this world, but that Allah is the one that we should rely on and, can, and put our complete faith and trust in. And he, Allah, the same Allah that has brought us this far, 
will suffice our needs today and tomorrow out of his grace. I want to begin to wind down, brothers and sisters, by reminding us once again that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that in a vicious and wicked day like this, it is not your good looks that will sustain us. It is not rich or poor. It is not where you live or how you live, but he teaches us that in a day like this, our righteousness will sustain us. And in this day and hour, we need that righteousness more than ever before. And so our brothers and sisters from the Ministry of Finance are making their way to the front. We're also asking for all of those who are watching throughout the entire nation of Islam to follow our lead. For those who are watching via the internet, you see the option and a button there and an opportunity for you to make a sacrifice. Will you do it and do it now and sacrifice knowing that Allah loves a cheerful giver and knowing that your sacrifice will draw you and I ever closer to all Almighty God Allah. And so now we seek your support to help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to realize the vision of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the building of a nation for our men, our women, our girls, our children. We want to build a future where there's no more murder. The new hereafter that we're talking about is a world where there's no more murder, no more rape, no lying, no stealing, no gambling, no hustling, no foolishness. All we want in the new world is peace, peace, peace. So will you help and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's work of rebuilding the work of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Will you give? Are you ready to give? Let us circulate the receptacles. Let us begin on the first row in every mosque, in every study group. And again, for those who are watching via the internet, please make a significant sacrifice and help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the building of a nation. As the receptacles are circulating, I want to thank you so very much. Each and every single one of you, we thank you for your support of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. We want you to know that your charity is never taken lightly and is always appreciated, always will be used for the forward motion of our poor and suffering people. And we intend with Allah's help, grace, and mercy to build a nation where you and I can have and enjoy freedom, justice, and equality. And that will happen, but it won't happen if you and I don't make a sacrifice, for surely we understand that freedom is not free. Is that right? Our enemy will not help us to bring into the beautiful reality what we see today. He has no desire to see us covered up and trying and uh, doing our very best to live a righteous life. This is the work of Almighty God Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, who came to us in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad. This is the work of our Messenger Messiah, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And this is the work of our beloved minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And a portion of this great work falls on your and my shoulders. So I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, give yourselves a big round of applause in advance for your charity, for your sacrifice, for your time, for your energy. And we thank you so very much live here from Mosque Mariam. I thank you once again on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I thank you on behalf of all of the Student Executive Council, all of us who labor here from Mosque Mariam. We thank you for what you will do today. We thank you for what you've done yesterday. And we thank you for what you will do tomorrow, if it in fact pleases Almighty God Allah. My time has drawn to a close, brothers and sisters. And the one who Brother Jeffrey introduced so beautifully, one of the great mothers of our nation is live and in effect and ready to come before us. Will you help me without any further delay to receive one of the most beautiful and gifted women that we have in our nation? Come on and receive with a big, big round of applause and a ton of love, Mother Tynetta Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, let us receive Mother Tynetta Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. You look so beautiful. Please be seated. In the most holy name of Allah, the all wise, true, and living God, to whom praise is due forever <clears throat> for coming to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, journeying from far distant land of Mecca in the Arabian Peninsula 
but making stops all around the world, making friendship and planting seeds that on this day and in this new coming dispensation, we would be received as brothers and sisters of the new rising star nation of Islam in the West. We thank him for his love for us, where nobody wanted us. He raised one, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as the exalted Christ and Messiah that the entire world has been waiting for. And we thank him for his prayer, for his mercy, to keep one with us who is shining that great torch of righteousness and truth throughout the entire world, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet you again, my dear beloved, almost sisters I see, uh, beautiful, beautiful. With the greetings of peace, I salam alaikum. I give thanks to Almighty God Allah for having guided us to reach this moment in our history. This is the September 9, and, or rather, the September of the month and the 11th day. It is not a coincidence that recently we discovered in some of the table talks of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that on this day, September the 11th, 1973, he spoke to a gathering of MGT officials called captains and began to visualize and to tell the future of what he saw coming to pass with the women in the nation of Islam. He saw, according to these footnotes that Brother Rahman discovered, and they were given copies to myself, to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, speaking about how we would come together in large numbers to form a convention of women, thousands and thousands together. So <clears throat> we thank the Honorable Minister Farrakhan <clears throat> and those who worked with him to make possible this vanguard retreat. So the great responsibility of raising our young women as the leaders of the new world order walking beside our men, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that he could make us so beautiful and so well trained that he could send us out to the world in committees with that training and the world's attention would be on our women whether it was in China, these are his words from those table talks, or any part of the world, and the people would come and say, who is this? And want to know, where did we come from? And they would recognize us by our expression of love and joy, etiquette, cleanliness, good manners, having the knowledge like a bright star in our heads, which we wear symbolically, but as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan pointed out to us at the farm, everybody who was at the farm know that he lit it up so that we know what our responsibilities are. <laughs> and he saw that we would be in diplomatic groups, that we would be in parliamentary uh, activity, that we would be attending conferences, and that the world's attention would be focused on this new rising star. So I thank the Honorable Minister Farrakhan for trusting me, trusting me to make journeys throughout the world in his company or without his company and trusting that the divine word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would be carried to those who are just coming into the knowledge of the nation. And that our women, we are the key, he has said. This is the field for the birthing of that new world order. That men cannot make it by themselves. 
It takes a strong, valiant, courageous woman, morally fit, to become that new woman, that new queen, that new goddess of a new world order. So I am so happy as I have progressed some 54 years since I was 16 years old in Detroit, Michigan, that I should still be alive and be able to look out at this flowing audience that is magnified throughout the nation on this beautiful day. I wish to close uh, with something that I think is extremely important as our minister is preparing to bring us further in the evolution of the beauty and the nature of the woman and why her role is so important. This article was written May 14 on Mother's Day in the year 2002 by the Honorable Minister Farrakhan called Heaven Lies at the Foot of Mother. And I'm quoting this because it is so applicable to what we learned yesterday from the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. The value of virtuous woman more than the value of the wealth of the earth. But the female and the value of her as a virtuous woman has been devalued by the societies of the earth. To de devalue the currency of any nation weakens that nation financially. When the price of gold as a standard of value goes down, then we cannot purchase what we could at the rate when gold had a higher value. The devaluation of the female and the devaluation of virtue in the society has caused us to live on a plane that is far beneath that which we are capable of. This is why every religion and every society must reevaluate how we look at the females in our society. To think of her as only being valuable for procreation and pleasure is devaluing her. To think of her as not being talented or gifted, that she may be an equal sharer in the development of the society, nation, or civilization, is to devalue her. To make her a sex symbol is to devalue her. To show her off before the world in an indecent manner is to devalue her. Rubies have no consciousness and do not know of their value. Neither do diamonds, sapphires, and emeralds. It is we who place a value on these stones. <laughs> In this world, the man has not given or placed a proper value on the female and thus because of this has caused the female to devalue herself. The behavior of our women and our girls demonstrates the thinking of a devalued human. For women to accept to be displayed or kept in an inferior status is to accept the devaluation of herself by the men of the world. Heaven lies at the foot of mother. So as you are so beautiful in outward appearance, let us shine up the inside of the house. Let our hearts be as beautiful or more beautiful than our outside appearance and walk with our men into heavenly paradise, the life of the hereafter. And oh, I thank you. I looked out. My vision is sometimes a little cloudy, but when I see Mother Khadija, all I can do is smile and thank Allah for her. <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> and it was Mother Khadija who first saw me
coming into the nation of Islam when I was accepting my ex in Detroit, Michigan. She was at the mosque on that day and I didn't know her and I didn't know uh, her husband and they didn't know their future but now their future is being fulfilled right in our presence today. Thank you, Mother Khadija. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Sister Betsy Jean, who so beautifully welcomed us at the farm yesterday. I wish to acknowledge such a beautiful woman. Thank you. Sister Karima and Sister Karen, thank you so much, all of you. I love you, I hug you, and wish for you the greatest future. You are the new leaders of the Nation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Mother Tainana Muhammad, let's give her another warm round of applause. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his many blessings, his many gifts, his goodness, and his mercy to the human family. We thank Allah for Abraham, we thank him for Moses. We thank him for Jesus and we thank him for Muhammad. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Almighty God Allah. As a student and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I could never thank Allah enough for his merciful intervention in the affairs of black people in America, in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and for his raising up from us his messenger Messiah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I'm so grateful to Allah for the man who is in our midst today, who is an extension of Allah's mercy and love for us, for none of us that are present here today would be where we are today, particularly those who have come to follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, if Allah did not give to us the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And we thank Allah for him. And in their names, I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Once again, assalamu alaikum. We, Mother Tainetta, had the honor of acknowledging the wife of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Mother Khadija Farrakhan, but I would like to acknowledge her once again, Mother Khadija Farrakhan, whom we are grateful to Allah for, thankful to Allah for her sacrifices and the great, great service that she renders to her nation and love for her husband. We are very, very happy today for many reasons. One, that Minister Farrakhan will be coming before us in just a few short moments. We are excited because it has been a few weeks since he has last given a public address from Mosque Maryam on a Sunday. That we are very excited. We are also very happy and honored to have uh, this weekend many members of the MGT Vanguard with us. We want to welcome all of the Vanguard who have traveled from near and far for this weekend's National Vanguard Retreat. We welcome you. I would like to just say as we prepare for what Allah has put on the heart of Minister Farrakhan to share with us today on the divine value of women. We, as followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and students, we bear witness that Allah has indeed raised up a messenger from among black people. There is no doubt in our minds that Almighty God Allah 
has fulfilled a great, great promise that he made through the mouths of his prophets before we were even conceived in the womb of our mothers. We bear witness that there indeed is a very bright light among us. And we need a light today to be guided out of the darkness that has overspread our planet. When Allah raises up a messenger from among the people, he gives to that messenger knowledge, wisdom, guidance, understanding, revelation. And one of the greatest proofs that you have a messenger among you is what he says to women, what he has to say concerning the value of women. What is a more of a greater sign and proof that we have among us than what God has put on the heart of his servant, what he has already taught of the inestimable value of women. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, there has been no leader, no teacher before or since that has taught the value of women, particularly the black woman in America. For that we thank Allah for. And if I said something wrong, I'm not apologizing for it. Because you know there has never been before Elijah Muhammad and Louis Farrakhan a leader and a teacher that has lifted women more than what we have found from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to teach the respect and the value of women, the sacredness of the female. And today, Allah, by Allah's grace and guidance, he will take us further into the divine value of women. Are we ready to receive our beloved minister? Oh, the sisters, what a beautiful sight. And all over America, we want to hear and learn and to know the value of women. And we have no better person no man more qualified to teach this subject than what Allah has blessed us with in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Join me as we receive the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That means God is the greatest. All praises due to Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his mercy and his goodness to the members of the human family. That whenever any member of this family strays from his straight path and earns his displeasure or his wrath, before he punishes, he always raises from among that people a prophet or a messenger to whom he gives what is called divine revelation in the form of scripture. And through these scriptures, he guides people back to his straight path that they might once again come into his divine favor. We thank Allah for Moses and the Israelite prophets that gave us the Old Testament. We thank him for Jesus and the apostles who gave us the gospel and the New Testament. 
and we thank him for Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the son of Abdullah, through whom Allah revealed the last book to come to the human family, which is called the Holy Quran. I am a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I could never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, who came among us as it was written that God would find, search and find that sheep that was lost. And he would bring that sheep again to himself, that the bottom rail would come to the top, and the last would become the first, and the tail would become the head. This, the scripture says, is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. We never believed that we were worthy enough in our condition that God would bring us from the bottom to the top, that God would take the tail and make it the head, that God would favor us, not by sending someone, but by coming himself. As it is written that God visited Egypt, he didn't send Moses, he came and raised Moses and then missioned him to Pharaoh to free his people. You are in a worse condition than the children of Israel because you have been under a wicked oppressor not just for a day, a week, a year, a month, but for over four centuries living under the shadow of death without justice. I thank him for his coming and for his wise choice of one from among us, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I am honored and happy beyond words today to greet each and every one of you with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language and in the words that Jesus and the prophets always spoke to their disciples. Jesus, you know, didn't say, hi, how you doing? What's happening, dog? <laughs> Jesus was a man of peace. In him is the essence of peace. And he comes to end this turbulent world of bloodshed and strife and hatred to bring in an eternal kingdom where everyone who would be in that kingdom would enjoy the greatest gift of all, peace and contentment of mind. I thank him for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I greet all of you with the greeting words of peace in the original language of the scriptures, Hebrew and Arabic. Assalamu alaikum in Arabic, shalom alaikum in Hebrew. But of course, we don't speak Arabic or Hebrew, so we'll just say, peace be unto you. I want to thank you all for coming. And as you know, there's no hardly any men in here at all. This is your day. <laughs> but I have a lot to say to men, and they're filling up the, the gymnasium. The gymnasium is full of men. And uh, don't feel bad, men, that you are not here today. 
But God cannot make us the head if the woman is not lifted. If God does not lift a woman, the man will never come up. So if God is going to make a new world and a better world, he's going to make that world coming through a woman. Remember that. Now, I want to thank uh, all of those who, who worked so hard on the Vanguard program. Uh, thank you and thank the mothers who allowed their young daughters to, to come. And I thank you all for your visit to the farm uh, yesterday. And what you didn't know or don't know, when you left, some of my family, the females uh, of my family, uh, children, grandchildren, were talking about the message that we gave uh, yesterday, the tone of the message, the sternness of the message, but the correctness of the message and the effect that the message had on their hearts. And someone ran into the house and said, come, come quickly. And uh, as my family ran out, I was the last to come out because they said that the, the wheels, the UFOs, were out on the farm. And And when I went out, I mean, they were there. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not eight. And they put on a show for us. Many members of my family broke into tears, but tears of joy because they've heard about these things and I have taught them about these things, but many of them had not seen them. But they made themselves very, very visible and it was like an exclamation point to my talk to you. And it was as though God was smiling on you for accepting the role of a woman and accepting righteousness as your way of life. There will never be a righteous kingdom until and unless there is a righteous woman. Where there are no decent women, there are no decent men. For the woman, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, the black woman in particular is the mother of civilization. So today, I wanted to talk about the divine nature and value of women. No matter what your color, or race or ethnicity, you have never looked at yourself as a part of 
the divine. That will change today. We live in the creation of God. And whatever God creates is of himself. And if God is the author and source of divinity, how could he create a universe and that universe not be divine? You can't improve on anything that he created. He created it perfect. Now we're getting there in a minute. He didn't create the sun in his image. Neither the moon nor the stars. He created nothing in his image or likeness but the human being. How could you be in his image and after his likeness and not have his divine nature? Talk to me. Think with me. Some of my brothers and sisters, Islamic scholars, they don't want to think that the human has divine qualities. We can wrangle over that with any scholar in the world. Why are you justified in wearing the attributes of God if you cannot reflect those attributes that are divine. So, we want to acquaint you today with your divinity and then call on you to be yourself. This Quran, I'm going to the Bible and the Quran as well, but the Quran in the fourth surah or chapter says something that I would like us to consider. It says, O oh, you who believe, by the way, the chapter is called The Women. The Women. Now, you haven't read, read any chapter in the Bible called The Women. Though you have read about great women in the Bible, not a whole chapter dedicated to women. But that's not the only one. There's a whole chapter in the Quran dedicated to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Wait now. In that chapter, the angels were in dispute among themselves as to who would have charge of Mary. Mary, according to the Quran, was the best of women. Not the mother of Abraham, not the mother of Moses, not the mother of Muhammad, but the mother of Jesus. Now let me help you to know why Mary is an example for women. She was not an unchaste woman. Even though the Jews charged her with fornication and even referred to her offspring as an illegitimate child. 
she had to be secretly put away <laughs> because the Jews at that time immersed in the law of Moses if they saw the woman pregnant but not a man they would have charged her and killed her so God protected her and the Quran says Jesus and his mother were a sign a sign is pointing to something bigger than itself In this chapter of the Quran, it reads like this. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. O people, keep your duty to your Lord. Who created you from a single being. And created its mate of the same kind and spread from these two many men and women. Some translations of the Arabic don't say being. It uses another word called essence. Surely God created you from a single essence and created the mate of the same. Well, what is the essence of something? According to the dictionary, the essence of a thing is the intrinsic nature or indispensable quality of that thing, especially something abstract that determines its character. Here's God now creating a human. The first human from a single essence and created the woman of the same. If God created us from the same essence, then what is that essence that determines our character? The essence of you is God himself. I'm going to say it again. The essence, that which determines your character, is your connection to the creator of the heavens and the earth, who is also your and my creator. You have never looked at yourself as belonging to God. You only see yourself in the light of what the enemy has made you to see yourself as ex-slaves or black people of no worth or value or purpose in life. He never taught you. And it, I don't blame him because he was given power to rule. His time is up. Your time has come. And now God has come to bring you back to yourself to introduce you to your intrinsic nature, essence, the essence that determines your character. Well, if the essence that determines our character is God himself, and the meaning of character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Mental and moral qualities that are distinctive to the human being. Ooh, 
that's very, very heavy. Because if your moral character and your mental character is of God, then you got to ask yourself, what happened to us? That our morals are not where God wants them to be. Our mental qualities have been curtailed, brought down, or even killed. I'll get to that in a minute. What happened to women and men that we are so far down and away from the essence of our own being that we now are not even a caricature of what God intended? I'm coming back to the Bible now. I want you to look at the book of Genesis. When you go home, and I know you, you love the Bible, but you don't read it enough. And it's not a book that should be in your house like some, uh, something that you put up to keep devils away. <laughs> It's a book to be read. It's a book to be studied. It's a book to be acted upon. Now look at this. The book of Genesis is telling us about the beginnings of things. That's what Genesis means, beginning. It starts with the creation of the world and every living creature in it. It records the first marriage, the first sin, the first consequences of sin, and the first reference to God's future plan to redeem humanity. And after it recounts the stories of the flood and the Tower of Babel, Genesis also tells the story of the birth of a nation. We are now in our Genesis. So I'd like to read just a few things from uh, the Bible that helps you to see your divine nature, our divine nature. Now the Bible says that God, you know, created the heavens and the earth as the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and the darkness he called night and and the day he separated the light from the darkness and one he called day and the other he called night. And he created the sun, the greater light, the moon, the lesser light. And it talks about creating the firmament. So he starts with the heavens. It's very important. Because if you don't create the heavens, the earth has no existence. Because the earth exists because of its relationship to the heavens. Let's watch. And God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear. And God called the dry ground land and the waters he called seas and God saw that it was good. And then he said, let the land sprout with vegetation. Every sort of seed-bearing plant. Boy, the God was really preparing a heaven for the righteous. 
Now, when you were born, you were born into this, like Adam. All of this was in existence before Adam was even made. So when Adam was made, God had prepared everything for him. So as he did all of this great work in six, in five days, on the sixth day, he said, well, let me make a man. Now, most of the time, we think that when he made a man, it was just this male figure that you see. Not true. Let me show you what the scripture says. He says in the, the 26th uh, uh, verse, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let us give them dominion over the fowl, the fish, the birds, the livestock, all wild animals. It says God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God created he them, male and female, he created them. So when you're looking at Adam as the offspring of God, look again at yourself because it wasn't just man that was created, it was man and woman. Now, if you go to the fifth chapter of Genesis, it says male and female created he them and called their name Adam. So when we talk about man, you can't even talk about a man unless a woman is present because there would be no man without a woman. Now, let's deal with this. When God created this man and this woman, he gave them assignments. He didn't tell you go to the nightclub, hang out in the bar, get drunk and fornicate. He gave you instructions that come out of the very nature of your creation. Be fruitful. What do you think that means? Well, everything else that he created, he created it to reproduce after its own kind. Well, if he created the cattle and they reproduce cattle, the birds reproduce birds, the fowl reproduce fowl, the Beasts of the field reproduce beasts of the field. Man and woman do what? Reproduce themselves. But if you are in the image and the likeness of God, then he too is being reproduced every time you properly reproduce. Think now, think with me. And look, he tells you, male and female now, I'm giving you dominion. You can't be stupid and rude. He never intended for a woman to be ignorant. He never intended for a woman to be unlearned, uneducated. Because if you're unlearned and uneducated, you cannot fulfill your destiny. The enemy wanted you dumb. You heard what I said. The enemy wants you to think nothing of yourself, so the enemy strips you of your real nature. Mm. 
he has denatured the female and the male and anytime somebody denatures you they've devalued you so right now as a woman or as a black man you are not valued and the worst part of that is you don't value yourself so he's made us to think so little of who we are the word bitch is a common expression among us I just think of what, what I'm saying oh my god Farrakhan you you cursed no I, I wasn't cussing that bitch what are you saying what are you calling yourself should any woman be referred to as a bitch when a bitch is a female dog and if you will use that kind of language to your sister or some other woman you have devalued her and in devaluing her you have devalued yourself and you have devalued your mother Uh, Jimmy Hoffa's son, James Hoffa Jr., was talking the other day. You might have heard this on CNN or Fox News. He was talking about the unions, and then he said, let's get rid of those sons of bitches. I know that sounds awful coming from such high place, but look, what is he saying? See, if you are the son of a bitch, you are a dog. God said he made these creatures now, but did he make you a dog? Or who made you a dog? And they got this song, Who Let the Dogs Out? Who Let the Dogs Out? when they drop a woman down to the position of a sex object and then take your clothes off of you so that men will see the beauty of your form and become sexually stimulated and aroused by the way you dress you have made yourself a dog and you're bringing the dog out of men I know that's not what you want to do but that's the vogue now I'm sexy I want to be sexy so everything that the enemy puts before you is to make you sexually attractive to a man. And that's why you're in so much pain because you attracted a dog. You attracted a man that acts like a dog and he made a bitch out of you. Elijah Muhammad said to us the nature of the woman is to equal herself up to God 
She will strive always to be better. But if she got a no good man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there's no such thing as a no good woman. Every no good woman was made no good by a no good man. Now, my dear sisters, we're the children of slaves. The slave master had a purpose for us that was not the aim of God. He had freedom when we were on the plantation to go in and out of us sexually. Whether we wanted to give ourselves or not, he took it from us. Right? When you look at yourself on the screen today in Hollywood and other places, how does Hollywood portray not only our women, but white women as well. But for you, they keep you looking. They call it in the Jewish language of what I've read of what they want to make of you in the movies, a tot. You know what a tot is? Something sweet and nice. Uh, delicious, delectable, delightful, after dinner, a tart. <laughs> and what they want to make of you, a woman that was created in the image of God, they want to make you such that you will come down, way down, bring your man down, teach your children in a way that they will be down, and you will look at yourself in your nakedness and enjoy seeing yourself in a degraded state. When I talked about my beautiful little sister, Rihanna, <clears throat> or Beyonce, or the other beautiful young lady that I can't call her name. You all know who I'm talking about, though. But she's a fine-looking child. What's her name? Beyonce. Who? Beyonce. Yeah. yeah. Now, that child is well-appointed. Lord, did I say something wrong? <laughs> but when you think that your bosom and your backside is your stock in trade that makes you valuable, then when you strip down and show Miss Booty, and, and I read when when uh, President Obama got elected, a black woman in the papers here in Chicago was talking about the first lady of the nation. And you know what she was talking about? She got back. What in the world are we thinking about that we measure the value of a woman by the shape of her backside. Talk to me today. Is this who you are? Is this what you want to be? Or do you want something better than what the white man has made of you?
All right. I'm trying. I'm trying to get this one over today. The divine nature and value of a woman. What is it, you know, when these men want to propose? You see them on TV, you know, and the man gets down on his knee, you know. Get out his little ring, you know, from K Jewelers or somebody. Or from Walmart, you know. <laughs> and he gets down on his knee and proposes. Do you know what that means? That means that in that act, he recognizes your supreme value. And he get down on his knee. Oh my God. If you could just read what that really means. You are so valuable that a man should never have you just to have you. He got to be worthy of you or he's not worth having you. That's the last time that man got down on his knee with honor and respect. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to give yourself to him so he will act in a way to make you give yourself. There's hardly a man out here that's worthy of you giving away yourself to him. Now, there's some out there that are worthy, but if you're not looking for worthy, you'll get what you get. And you do not look for somebody worthy of you because you have no self-worth. So any man that looks good, any man that talks good can get you to lie down with him. Now let me say something that I said to these vanguard yesterday. You see, Almighty God created everything out of the dark womb of space, everything. And he gives you a womb that resembles the darkness of space out of which everything is created. Man don't have a womb, it's you. And what is your womb for? Your womb is the workshop of God. I'm going to say it again. Every king, every ruler, every prophet, every wise man or woman, every scientist, every general, every person of value came through the womb of a woman. And the most precious womb was the womb of Mary. Oh, man. Her womb was the workshop of God because God from her womb produced that one which would reconcile the whole of humanity back to himself and I got to say this for you that love Jesus Jesus was not loved by this world 
and you can't love Jesus and not live the life that Jesus asks you to live. Just bear with me, you know, because I'm very full. Your womb is a special place. The vaginal tract of the female is the entry to the womb. That is sacred. Oh, Y'all got to hear me today. That track is protected by a thin piece of flesh. It's not easily accessible. There's pain and there's blood when you enter that sacred chain. I know you ain't never heard no preacher preach like this. And as my father, Elijah Muhammad, said, they couldn't preach it because they didn't know it. But today, you will know that I have a teacher that I am a student of who loves you so much that he will absolutely train us and is training us to protect you with our lives. I'm going back now to the sacred passageway. You know, in geopolitics, this is a, maybe a little heavy in a sense, but if you look at the Panama Canal, it took billions of dollars to create from the Isthmus of Panama a canal that would link the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific so that the travelers would not have to go all the way around the tip of South America to come into the Pacific Ocean. So that channel is so valuable that armies protect that channel. And when Carter gave that back to the Panamanians, when Reagan became president, he said, we're going to get the Panama Canal back and you know, under Colin Powell, they attacked Panama, killed over 4,000 black and brown people to destroy Panama's ability to protect that channel. When you have the Suez Canal, a canal that unites the Mediterranean to the Red Sea, down into uh, the uh, Arabian, the Gulf, of, the Gulf of Aden. On the other side is another strategic waterway that links Pakistan, Iran, the Emirates with the Persian Gulf into the Indian Ocean. These geopolitically are so valuable that they fight for the advantage to be in those places so they can govern, monitor, control, and even keep ships that they don't like from using those waterways. That's how valuable channels are.
the channel to the womb is a sacred channel that must be guarded. The Quran says, God, your chastity. Guard it. Because when you leave that canal, that channel unguarded, you may open yourself up to diseased men, people that don't care, have any value for you, but just use you as a pleasure tool and then throw you away. Some of you do not think that you'll get a man unless you lay down and open your knees to that man. If you got to open your knees to get a man, he ain't no man. He's not worthy of you. And let me tell you something about men. Which you already know, you could tell me. <laughs> when you are easy for a man to get, you are not the man that he wants to marry and spend his life with. He's the man you'll come to when he wants pleasure but he's not the man that will give you the type of love, honor, and respect that you yearn for, but you'll never get it if that channel is like a free channel. You gotta pay a lot of money to use the Panama Canal. <laughs> Ain't nothing free. Free love is, is Makes sense. But you do it in other ways. You know how you do. After the man has access to the channel, after a while you tell him about your rent and tell him about your phone bill and car note. Can I get a witness? <laughs> because pleasure ain't free. And these channels cost money. So before you allow a ship, I said a ship. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Excuse me. Before you allow a ship in that channel, they stop you. When we were going through the Panama Canal, I didn't realize how much money the ship had to pay to use it. And they stop you right there. You got to come on up with what you got to come up with or they won't allow you to go through. That's the way you got to be. When a man talks about he love you. See, love is a verb. It ain't a noun. There gotta be some action behind I love you. Now, when you're going through the channel, you got to bring your papers. <laughs> <Did I say? laughs> They're examining your papers. Is this ship legally registered to go? What flag are you flying under? <laughs> what is the cargo that you're carrying? 
and after you satisfy all the requirements and you are verified that you can use that channel the last thing is the money everything else is fine but now the price is your value should never be determined by dollars but you don't need a man who don't have money you don't need a man that you gotta work to maintain him you don't need no man like that now to the brothers Brothers, don't, don't get angry with your brother because you're not worth a damn if you make babies and you will not support them. I want the register of the nation to be cleaned up if you are not feeding your children, you can't occupy no place up here. You make babies and you don't care for them, but you can party and buy fine shoes, designer clothes, but your children are raggedy, hungry, and out of doors. What kind of man is that? No man will hold a position in the nation that has babies that he's not taking care of. So I want all laborers examined. You can stay. We ain't putting you out. But how, what kind of example are we setting if we can occupy positions and talk all this talk and some woman out there is crying because we have failed in our responsibility we don't need no white man judge to tell us you gotta give something it should come from your heart gave man and woman dominion he gave us the power to influence the course of events he gave us the ability internally intrinsically naturally to manage affairs he gave us a means of limiting or regulating something he gave us a place where things are verified. I like that word verification. Because, you know, when something is verified, that means it's true. You got to verify these men. So you got to manage yourself. You have to control yourself. You have to be strong enough to regulate the affairs of yourself so that when the suitor comes, we call it in Islam courtship. I don't know what you call it out there, but court means you got to present evidence so that we know should I or should I not. You got to ask the right questions. Oh, I, I 
really like you, sister. You're so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you been married before? Well, uh, 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 uh. Yes. And uh, how many children do you have? Well, uh, from Sadie, I has two. From Mindy, I has one. And uh, two different mothers? Well, well, yes, yes. And what happened? See, you got a car wreck. <laughs> you want to know what happened to cause the car to wreck? Is it may not be worth buying? Don't you want a car that's never been in an accident before? Look at all these accidents. And we're in a mosque or a church with accidents. And we see a woman going up for communion, she's looking fine, because there's no regulation on her dress. So when she go to take communion, she's showing stuff now. What you say, well, well? <laughs> when a female demonstrates her desire for a man in that way, actually what you see is exactly what you get. You know, every man likes beauty, you know, I mean, that's, and you like beauty too. I mean, that, we're both attractive to each other. But without you guarding your chastity, men are never going to be nothing. People think that in Islam, we like enslave our women by making them or asking them, not making them, asking them to lower the hem of their garment, to cover their bodies. And some women think, I ain't never going to be no Muslim if that's what you Muslims do. But now look at this. How many movies have you seen about Jesus? Every Easter, every Christmas is a movie about Jesus. Tell me something. Which one of the women that was around Jesus came with a miniskirt? Which one of them had the cleavage out to attract Jesus? They all were dressed, covered, because the beauty of a woman and her body is for her to share with that person that is found worthy of her, no one else. So when you want to show people what you got, you're making yourself an object you like to hear a man whistle at you. See, men don't whistle at women. They whistle for dogs. Whoop, 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 come. A dog calling. That's not, that's not what you want. Your mind is akin to the mind of God. Women can create, women can govern, women can manage, women can do practically everything that a man does. Now listen to me. So you're not limited. But you can limit yourself by the way you carry yourself. Now, I think I should hurry. I didn't, 
uh, get to where I wanted to get. But you have to verify the man before you ever, ever, ever permit him access to you. You see when I talked about that ship? You got to be just like that person at the canal, making sure that this boat is worthy to go through this. And if you're not strong enough as a woman to question a man, then you'll get from the court what you deserve. Some of you feel that you'll lose a man if you question him too tight. And you won't lose a man, you'll lose a dog. And you wasn't looking for a dog. And the man should take the same approach. Sisters can look real pretty, but they've been married three times. Three wrecks. Well, hell, you better ask some questions then. What, what caused the breakup with husband number one, husband number two, husband number three? Well, hell, maybe I don't want to be husband number four. Because your breakups have reality in them of something missing in us that could not keep our marriage together on both sides. So courting is important that you let no man get to you until you have satisfied the inquiry the curious nature because once you submit yourself to a man and he enters that channel and you become pregnant and then you can't find him no more. Now you're locked into two things. Should I have the baby? since the government has accepted that abortion is legal? Should I kill a life? Because I, I don't really want responsibility. The act of sex is a responsible act. And the act of sex that procreates human life means once you enter that, you have to sacrifice for the life that you are pregnant with. You can't be a potty mama and drop your irresponsible behavior on your mother. And your mother raised you, now she got to raise your children too? I'm almost there. Now, there are three things that Jews have done that makes them the most powerful, richest, influential people on our planet. In the Babylonian Talmud, Jews are all told, you must acquire land. So Jewish people, no matter where they are in the world, you'll always find them having land, real estate, and then cash that they invest and they are in trade and commerce and banking and the whole world has to come to them. Well, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, study the white man. He's successful. He makes no excuses for his failure. He works in a collective manner. Elijah Muhammad said, you do the same. We left the South 
because farming was drudgery. When you had to share crop, that was painful. So when many of our brothers and sisters left Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Arkansas, they didn't want to see a farm no more. So we got stuck in the factories. But the factories were run by the relationship of the people that we worked for on the plantation. They hooked it up. So you ran from the farm, you ran to the factory. And who was running the factory? Same people that had your grandpa and grandma picking cotton and tobacco on and sugar on the plantation. See, the enemy have you coming and going. And you that know sharecropping, you know that when you would come at the end of a season and tell that man, here's what I have in my books and whatnot, he tell you, well, wait a minute. You owe me. And you better not figure behind me. Many of our people have suffered indescribable pain from working on the land. So what the enemy did, he destroyed in us value for land. I'm going to end this. Did you know Elijah Muhammad said that the woman is the field through which we produce our nation. He describes you as earth. Earth is fundamental to everything. Everything. And so are you. I didn't tell the sisters uh, when they were at the farm yesterday about what we are learning from a man named Mr. Will Allen of, uh, in Milwaukee about producing soil. We met this great, great brother and when he said, he visited the farm and he said, oh, well, that's nice. But he said, what, no matter how good the seed is, if you don't have good soil, you won't get the best product. I sent a team to learn his methods. Of them was my daughter, my son-in-law, and another son, other believers, and they learned how to create soil. And they learned how to look at soil and determine its value. When you put your hand in soil and there's no worms, that's not good soil. One of our farmers from Georgia came up, put his hand in our soil, and he found worms. He said, oh, this is pretty good. But if you could see the worms in the soil that we were blessed to get and that we are creating now, these worms are like jumping beans almost, jumping jacks. You, if you see worm, you see a worm crawling like so. That's about the size of Negroes, you know. <laughs> Slow moving, you know. But when you put your hand in that soil and those, you see those worms, they're literally jumping. So much life in them because the life that's in the soil, they are making the soil rich. 
just by the presence of the worms, 90% of the toxicity that's in the soil is destroyed by the presence of worms. I ain't talking about soil. I'm talking about you. You are the earth. You are the foundation of civilization. And what has happened, you have become toxic. A toxic, denatured woman. You notice how the enemy has taken the vitamins, the minerals, proteins out of vegetation. Dr. Alim, our Minister of Health said, a carrot today is not like a carrot 50 years ago. There was life in the food. There was no such thing as a um, Wait, a health food store 50 years ago? Did you know that the earth itself has everything in it that we need? Did you know that when Master Farad Muhammad came to America, the first thing he did was go to the medicine cabinet and take everything that we had in the medicine cabinet and throw it away. If we did that to your medicine cabinet today, you would think that we were the real devil coming in your house to kill you, when in reality your medicine cabinet is already killing you. And when you look at the medicines that you have, and look at the side effects. You don't know whether you should take the medicine or die with what you got. Because the side effects are so bad. But Master Farad Muhammad, fulfilling what the scripture says, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. A man cannot give you life and give you disease and medicines at the same time. So he threw the medicine away and said, your kitchen is your hospital. Your kitchen. Have you ever heard that before? Some of you are Muslims are, but I want my Christian sisters to remember grandma great-grandma they didn't go to no college like you and I we went to college and got stupider they didn't go nowhere but they were in a garden they studied the nature of what was around them and when we got sick there was no hospital they went in the field and picked something up and came in and made a tea for us and we got well we've lost that power so sisters how can you fulfill your destiny Look at what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said about the woman. He said, she is your first nurse. She is your first teacher. How many of you have gone to nursing school? That's a heck of a course, isn't it? What did you have to study to be a nurse? Anatomy, biology, chemistry, right? Well, what do you think a cook is? See, some of you hate cooking as though it's demeaning a woman to know how to cook. 
and that's why you have no home today because you don't know how to make a home because the enemy have taken you out of a home and robbed you of the ability to make a home and heal your family through the science of cooking. You say, well, I, I don't know, nobody gonna make me no cook. Well, I have my law degree, I, 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 yeah, right. But I, I, I don't have no peace either. Cause you don't know what to do for a man when you get him to keep him. You don't keep a man by the bed. You keep a man by the wise use of your head. See, if your head is educated properly, a man, you, you know how to take care of him. And you shouldn't know how to take care of a man because you want that man to get up in the morning, get on out the house, go on and make some money and bring that money home and take care of you and the babies that you produce for him. But if he's tired all the time, sick, hair broke down. Hey, well, baby, go to the doctor. And he load you up with some more pills. Now look, I'm, I'm going to close. Do you know what God told Adam? He put him in a garden and he told him to dress the garden. Do you know when you wake up in the morning and you shower, you will not come out hopefully, naked, you dress. You cover nakedness by dressing. The earth God gives you. But now the human being is given a command by God. Adam was to dress the garden. That takes skill. Stupid people can't dress the garden. People that don't know science can't dress the garden. People that don't know the science of astronomy cannot become great builders. People that don't know the movement of the moon and the seasons, they don't know when to plant and when to harvest. There's science in life. So God gave this man, Adam, a woman. She was to help him. How many of us know how to help a man? I'm glad there's a few raised their hands. And the others said, I can't help a man to do nothing. If a man ain't doing nothing, he don't need help. <laughs> so if a man is doing something in accord with his divine nature he needs a woman that's in accord with her divine nature to help him accomplish what God has put on him to accomplish and you cannot accomplish that without knowledge not the education of the world I'm talking about the acquisition of real knowledge that is practical, that makes you independent of your former slave masters and their children. Look, God said, or oh, the scriptures of Genesis said, now we're in the Genesis. Remember I said we're in our beginning? And it starts with God making a man and then the first marriage. Oh, I'm sorry, sisters, if two of you sisters love each other, well, I don't know. We all should love each other. That's the teaching of Jesus. Love ye one another. But he didn't mean it like you taking it. Don't you realize that if two women 
are married, where is the productivity of repeopling the planet? Replenish the earth. That's the command of God. Well, okay. Well, all right, all right. I, I'll do my part. I'm going to marry a woman and have a man to get me pregnant. Then I'll fulfill my obligation. Stop it. See, the enemy has made evil fair-seeming. It's not our fault. I mean, I'm not here to condemn you or others for what we do of sin because ain't nobody in here holy, including me. But where I stand is holy. Not because of me, but because of who is standing with me and backing me up. They are the holy ones, and their holiness covers me. Preachers should never preach as though we don't have any sin. The Bible says all have fallen short of the glory of God. And all means all. And that's why we always look for God's mercy, God's forgiveness. So each of us is guilty of something. But whatever we're guilty of, it strangles the life force. It depletes your energy to do wrong. If you really want to be powerful, we have to make a decision to do what is right. Now, yesterday, yesterday, the sisters of the Vanguard presented me and Mother Khadija with just beautiful, beautiful gifts. And I told you yesterday that your gifts mean more than what you gave me. Did you know that when God created uh, the earth, the scripture says, and there was no man to till the ground. So if God creates a man and there's no man to till the ground, then what's the first great profession? What is it? What, why, why are you saying it's so? Do you realize that everything we have on, everything we ate this morning or last night, if there were no farmer, we would have nothing. But look at what's happening in America. Small farms are being eaten up by the big farmer, and the big farmer is a merchant of death. And so they're feeding us really nothing of value. So you got to go to the health food store, buy some pills, get some of this. I got to have my vitamins and they fleecing you with the food in the supermarket that has no value, fleecing you with the pills that have some value, and now you're full of disease, and diabetes, heart, trouble, cancer. We're sick people, and we're sick because we have depended on our enemy to take care of us. And there was no man to till the ground. So what does tilling mean? It means to farm. It means to work, to plow, to dig, to prepare, to fertilize, to cultivate a crop, a plant, to raise, to tend, to bring on produce. God wants us to be productive. Productive of what? productive of what you need to sustain and maintain your life. Food, clothing, shelter, who's doing that for us? Somebody else. Well, what kind of woman are you? Are you not making your children to see the value of the earth 
and making productive men rather than a bunch of dependent men that walk around with a degree on the wall that means nothing because they produce nothing. Well, if you're going to dress the garden, if you're going to till the land, my last points are Cain and Abel. Marriage produced Adam two children. Cain was the eldest child. And the Bible said he was a tiller of the ground. Isn't that what God wanted? Somebody to farm? Listen carefully. And so Abel was born. And when they matured, Abel was raising sheep. Cain was tilling the ground. At a certain point, Cain brought a crop to present to the Lord. The Bible says that God did not respect Cain's offering. I find that very hard to believe. And I would like, in my own humble way, to correct the way the scripture is put. Because God would not say he didn't have somebody to till the ground. And when Adam produced a son that was able to till the ground and worked hard to till the ground, to produce a crop for God, why wouldn't God respect his effort? See, it's not that God didn't respect his effort, but he found more favor in Abel's offering. And what did Abel offer? He offered him the firstling of, of a sheep, a little lamb. And when it looked like God accepted a lamb and seemed to reject the hard work of Cain, Cain's face fell. His countenance dropped. He became angry. See, and when you make a presentation, and it appears that your presentation has not value in the eyes of those that you present it to, it does something to your spirit. Your face drops. Your countenance falls. And sometimes you become angry and embittered. So God starts talking to Cain. Hey, 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 wait, wait. Cain, wh why is your countenance fallen? Why are you angry? If Cain had spoken up and said, well, God, you made me to till the ground. Why didn't you accept my work? I did the work. Farming is hard. Ask the brothers at the farm how hard they work to produce the crops that we're producing. That's no lightweight thing. That's sweat from your brow to produce a crop. So I'm sure God respected that work and that sweat, but God had something else in mind that Cain didn't question him on. See, sometimes when you're angry and embittered, you got to raise questions. Because it could be that nobody's rejecting you, but they see something that maybe you didn't see. Now, why did God accept a lamb and appear to reject the sweat of Cain to produce a crop? It's because at the end of the world, that Adam's rebellion produced, a lamb-like human being would come to birth 
and through that Lamb of God, the sins of the world would be taken away. And through that Lamb of God, man would once again be reconciled to God. So God wasn't putting Cain down, but he saw so far in the future that he took the Lamb as a sign of his acceptance of that lamb that would come at the end of the world of evil. See, now, in our work today, you as a woman, the helper of God, you must study science. You must study chemistry. You cannot nurse your home, your children, your husband with a pork chop and McDonald's and some crazy fried food. You got to know the value of what you're putting in your mouth and what you're putting in the mouths of your children. And when you go to the store to buy food, you got to know what you're looking for. My mother used to take me shopping with her, and I would watch my mother. She'd turn that fruit over, turn that vegetable, check it out, take this one, leave that one. She'd go to the meat counter. She'd make that man bring that meat out. She would look at it. Today, it's all packaged. It looks so nice. It's so red. The orange is so orange. The apple is so red. You don't know that they're gassing it to make it look this way, coloring it to make it look that way. But if you don't know the value of the land, then you'll be in the supermarket dying from the mess that they feed you because you don't know any better. But when you know better, you expect it to do better. Now, these sisters yesterday presented me with something, and Mother Khadija, from our class for women. Sisters, a class has been set up first to teach us sewing. For what? Look at the clothes you just got on. How much did an inferior garment cost you? You cannot even dress your girl children's decently. Because now their little navel is out, you know, with these little short things. Oh, it's really sickening. And you take it because you go to these places to buy and there's nothing decent there. So if there's nothing decent there to cover yourself, the enemy don't want you covered because the enemy wants your man to be a dog. So how are you going to prepare a future for your girls and yourself if you don't know how to take a pattern and make something style yourself in a beautiful way you can do that but you don't want to do that because that's beneath you lawyer doctor accountant that's not beneath you when you dress in your little suit with your tight pants and you go downtown, you know what that white man is saying to you. You know he's trying to grope you and do all kind of, he wouldn't grope you dressed like this. He'll get messed up. Not only will these whoop his behind, but we'll come behind him and he'll have no behind left. Sister Sandy, would you come forward for a minute, please? Get a, a microphone. Sister Sandy, maybe you bring me 
starting with the first thing that the sisters gave. Start with the cookbook. Now, this was a presentation that the sisters made, but out of the junior MGT Vanguard, they made their own cookbook. And if you look in their cookbook, you'll find they know something about chemistry because they chose foods that enrich the body, stimulate the mind, create more energy. That's a beautiful gift. We're starting off now as we used to train women when I was a youngster. Women had to learn the art of home making. Do you remember that, sisters? Even if you had a college course, you still had to know how to make a home. And to make a home, you had to know something about cooking. That's lost now. It's Sarah Lee, whoever that is. Somebody cooking for us. You don't even know what their nasty kitchen looks like. You don't know whether they blew their nose and shook it in the pot. You, no, I'm serious. You got some nasty, dirty people on television showing you how to cook. The woman licked the thing and then put the thing back in the, put her hand in it, did this. In our kitchen, you have to be clean. In our kitchen, you have to wear a hair net because we don't want to eat your hair. Koreans in our plate. Nothing wrong with cooking. Try to learn and learn the best foods to eat, how to prepare it, and give yourself health. Don't spend money on fine things and neglect good food. Good food for you, good food for your children. Never send your children to school with an empty stomach. Never. You feed your children properly before you send them out to school. Prepare a healthy meal for them when they come home. This is your duty as a woman. And if you don't do it, you're shortchanging your children, you're shortchanging yourself, and you're shortchanging our future as a people. Next. Now, Sister Sandy, what, what is in this? Bring it over here, please. I, I, I like to look at it. Put it right up here. Thank you, sir. Now, what's in this, Sister Sandy? It's um, handcrafted. It's handcrafted natural soap, detergent, um, soy candles that burns um, toxin free, and towels that were. Um, um, embroidered and monogrammed by the MGT and GCC Vanguard. Well, now, listen. From the earth you produce industry. Now here's young girls making soap. We know what's in this soap because we made it. And it looks good too. Yes, sir. What is this ball here? That is decoration. <laughs> There's also bath salts in there made from Dead Sea salt. And what? Bath salt. Yes. Yes, sir. That's also. From? Um, we got the salt from the Dead Sea. It's Dead Sea salt. Dead Sea salt. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's good for mentally dead people. <laughs> 
A sister by the name of Sister Tracy out of Miami trained the junior, the Vanguard and some of the junior MGT Vanguard to do um, this project. Now we've lost this ability. Hand crafts, needle crafts. You've lost it. Grandma knew how to do this. They made quilts that covered our bodies. They made sweaters. They made things with their hands. And you have lost that art and you must get it again because we are going to do business from farms. That's right. Creating what we call agribusiness. Next, please. Yes, sir. This one's right. Now, these are young women. They, they're busy, man. I, I tell you. Thank you, uh, MGT, for teaching our young women. You can bring that one too. Now, sister, what, too. What, what is this? This is um, another product made by the MGT and GCC Vanguard. It's a throw blanket, a pillow for the head, and a lap pillow. It's made out of raw silk. Um, the, the MGT Vanguard sewed the pillows by hand, and they also sewed the blanket, but they used a sewing machine to sew the blanket. Now, did you know how the Jews got rich? See, we were on the farm picking the cotton. How many of us remember cotton picking? <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Look, we picked that cotton. Cotton yesterday was like oil is today. And we picked that cotton. They turned the cotton into lint and the lint into cloth. And their brothers and sisters in the north became masters of the needle trades. So when we needed a blanket, the Jewish man downtown, they call it Jewtown over here, he sold you a blanket. You needed a pillowcase. You needed a sheet. You didn't make the pillowcase the sheet. You just picked the cotton out of which white folks made the sheet. And we were in the factory working for them. Why can't we do that for ourselves? Right. See, if we don't create industry, we will always be dependent on somebody else to do for us what we can do for ourselves. Thank you. What's next? The book. That's it? No, sir, the book. This is a little booklet called How to Take Care of Your Husband. Now look. These are courses that we take as women in the class, but that doesn't mean it stops there. These sisters are learning so much wisdom and their divine and moral character is becoming more and more visible. And we are proud of your effort. And we hope our women, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, or nationalists, we gotta go back to creating production industry, but it all has to start from the ownership of land. You agree with that? Yes, sir. What's next? That's it? Yes, sir. Thank you, Sister Sandy. You're doing a wonderful, wonderful job. Thank you. Now, Well, it's time to, to depart, but I think I should say a word to men. If what I said hurt you as a man, that was not my intention. 
my intention was for us as men to see the value of any woman in our lives. My intention was to tell these young ones, some of them in here 12, 14, just growing into a young woman, woman some 17, 18, 19, 20. I want them to know how valuable they are so that when men hit on them, they will know how to resist. To all of you sisters, fasting is prescribed in the Bible and the Quran. To take a day where you say, I'm not going to eat today. And you know you need food to keep going. But if you learn how to fast, you're beginning to discipline your appetites. And through learning how to fast, when the hormones become active and you're disturbed, you know, in, in a biological way, you can still manage to control your appetites through learning how to fast, but before that, prayer. See, prayer, the remembrance of God, is the greatest force in the restraining of the doing of evil. Prayer, charity, fasting. Struggle with your person, with yourself. And if you will do that, in a short while, we'll be able to be examples to our beautiful women out there. We have a great people out there who are suffering drugs, all the things that we've been through. And God is blessing us to conquer our own weaknesses for what purpose? So we can help others to master theirs. That's your duty, that's your job. So let, for now, put a man out of your mind. That's not necessary right now. But what is necessary is that you cultivate yourself as a woman in the character of divine. Now listen to what I'm about to say. You are not man's woman. You are the woman of God. And he uses you in a co-creative work of creating the human beings that will make for God a better world. So your womb is sacred and no man should have access to that channel if he's not a God-fearing man that loves God and because he loves God, he will love you. And then from that love of God that both of you have, you produce a child like Jesus, like Mary produced. See, we don't have to have a lot of devils coming out of your womb. We can produce Jesus over and over and over and over again if we devote that womb to God. Now, brothers, When you got a woman like this, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, in my conclusion, when you produce a crop, you kill the insects and the things that would destroy your crop. 
You go out and you pull up the weeds that will choke out your crop. And if somebody try to steal your crop, you're justified in using your shotgun. How much more valuable is our women? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, no nation on earth will ever respect us until we can prove that we love our women. Until we can prove that we respect our women, then they'll know that we respect ourselves because she's a part of us. And no good man will ever beat a woman. No good man will be violent to a woman. Well, I got a woman, man. She mouth off on me. Well, so what? If you learn how to handle yourself, God will help you to handle your woman. Let me tell you something, sister. You don't like that word control, but you are out of control. And you are out of control because there's no regulation. There's no regulator. There's no regulations that you're submitting to that brings you under divine control. A man that's like we are, you know, we, we don't know how to control you. And, and, uh, and I know you, you, you resent even the talk of that. Remember when you got married, will you honor, obey? They just wrote that right out. They obey that fool. Well, if he's a fool, what are you doing with him? If you can't respect him enough to obey him, what do you have him for? You always want a man that proves to you he's wise enough, intelligent enough, careful enough to guide you. And he's respectful enough to listen to truth coming out of your mouth when he's in error. That is the type of man that you want in your life. Now, brothers, yes, we got to stop this foolishness of allowing anybody to come in our neighborhood and take our women. Yes, sir. See, the white man got sense. He kill you if he see you with his woman. He used to. Today, he'll give her to you. And we're killing him, you know, we're really killing white folks without a gun. Because the heavy charge that the black man is shooting, that fella is going off the planet with these half-white babies that are coming in the world. No, I'm serious. He's, he's dying a natural death. But if you love your woman, we don't like you out all hours of the night. What the, hell, what the hell are you out there for? What kind of man are you, or me, or us, that our women can go out, hang out all night long? You don't even ask them, where you been? I've been where I've been. Now, wait a minute, sisters. You have children. And one day when you have children, you're going to want to do what? Regulate. They're coming and going, right? You're going to look at who they bring to your house as their friends and you will tell them, don't, no, 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 not that one. But if you can regulate the affairs of your children, why don't we as men let God regulate our affairs, then we regulate the affairs of our house so God is ruling the house. Now, brothers, we're going to have to be willing now, listen, 
to fight, to kill, to die, protecting our woman. You say, wait a minute, did you say kill? That's exactly what I said. Now half of you, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at the men that's in jail right now killing somebody over you. But you weren't worthy. But if you're going to try to be righteous, then you're worthy for us to fight for you, die for you, and kill anybody that want to mess with you and rape you and destroy your value. Now, if that don't please you, you say, now I was doing all right to let man say kill. I thought they was righteous people. A righteous person will kill in defense of righteousness. See, you, you've been made a silly people. We shouldn't hate nobody. Hate destroys the hater. Just listen to your stupid self. You let the white man teach you that. Well, we got to love everybody. Who said that? Show me in the Bible where God told you, love everybody. What caused God to kill all those people in the days of Noah, flood them out? Did he love the wicked? No, he killed the wicked. And he also threatened, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Did he love the homosexuals in Sodom and Gomorrah? What did he do? He killed them. Not even a blade of grass grow today in Sodom and Gomorrah. Did he love Pharaoh? What did he do? He killed Pharaoh. Hell, if you ain't got killing in you, you don't have God in you. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar! <laughs> Allahu Akbar! <laughs> the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, let's put our hands together from here in Chicago, all over the country, for our beloved minister, his wonderful teaching. All praise is due to Allah. Don't let it die down. I think we can do better than that. We were thought thoroughly today. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and his teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Dear sisters and brothers, I know you want a copy of today's message, right? Please have a seat. But before we dismiss and close this wonderful program with prayer, we want to ask all of our sisters that are here in the sanctuary, in the lower level, over in the gym, throughout the property, and the brothers who are visiting us today for their very first time. Can we just recognize you? Those of you who are here for your first time, can we see you by a show of hands? Can you just raise your hand? We want to welcome you again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are our most honored guest today. Now, we have reason to believe that you enjoyed yourself, but we won't know unless we ask you ourselves. So we want to know how many of you believe that what you heard this morning from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, how many of you believe that what he said, what he taught, is the truth and is good 
for our people, good for black people in America, black people around the world, and good for every member of the human family. Let me see your hands if you believe that. Sisters, did you believe it too? Well, show me, I need to see your hands too. That's right. Now, how many of you were inspired by today's message that you would like to learn more of the teachings and the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and would like to become a student and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of that beautiful black man that we just heard from today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. How many of you would like to do that? Let me see your hands. That are visiting for our, your first time. I see my sister's hand in the balcony, those that are here. And what we want to do, we want to welcome you today. Those of you who want to become a part of the nation of Islam and enter into this class that the minister mentioned in his message. Those of you who would like to become a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, enter into this class that he has set up for the development of women. It would be my honor, my privilege, my pleasure to shake your hand on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to welcome you today to the Nation of Islam. Those of you who raised your hand in the balcony, you can make your way down. Those of you who are here in the main sanctuary, they raise their hand if you would like to become a part of the Nation of Islam. Don't feel bashful, don't feel shy. You know what you heard today. You have never heard it from any teacher, any leader. You have never been taught your true value as you just heard from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So my sisters that would like to become a part of, come on down. My brothers and sisters that are in the lower level, you can make your way up the sisters that are next door and the brothers that are next door, one of our representatives will greet you and thank you. thank you. Brothers and sisters, once again, we want to thank you live from Mosque Mariam. If there are any other sisters or brothers here live in the sanctuary that would like to come down and to become a part of the Nation of Islam, I see my dear sister there coming across the center aisle. If there are any other sisters, we want you to come right on down the center aisle we thank Allah, we see you coming, and we're patiently waiting on you, dear sister. We thank Allah for each and every one of you up in the balcony on the sides. If you want to come on down the center aisle, the time is now. Come right on down the center aisle. We come on down that center aisle, dear sister. We see you. Come on down. It's not as intimidating as it see, as it looks. These, we are your family, and all of these sisters in white are your sisters. We love you. We embrace you this day. We welcome you to the nation of Islam. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Let's give the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan another warm round of applause. We were thoroughly fed today, and the sisters got a bonus. Oh, we've got two more sisters. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. We welcome you coming on down the center aisle one, two, Whenever you come, come on down the center aisle, brothers and sisters. 
We're ready to serve you. <laughs> to all of the sisters, please have a seat. To all of our sisters who are visiting us, those of you who did not stand up today, we want you to come back out because you already acknowledge you agreed at what you heard to be the truth and good for you, good for our families, our communities, good for our people. We want to invite you to come back out to attend the meetings so that you will know that what you heard today comes from a body of knowledge that will help to lift our people up and bring us back into the position that we once were before our fall. So again, to all of the vanguard that are visiting, all of the sisters that have traveled from near and far, we pray that Allah will bless you with a safe return to your cities. You got a bonus because you heard from the minister yesterday, coming back today, so you should be on fire to return back to your cities. And to all that are watching on the internet, we, the DVD will be available for purchase on the internet Today, you can purchase it before you leave. It is being high speed, duplicated, already ready, packaged, sealed, no, and ready. But it's in the process. It's in the process. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, you can get it before you leave. Okay? And it's available right next door in our school at Muhammad University of Islam. I, Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum. I will not belabor the point before our student minister Ishmael closes us out in prayer. We simply want to say to those who are watching via the internet, as well as those who are watching throughout our entire nation of Islam, when we collected charity live from Mosque Mayam, we were experiencing some technical difficulties. The entire nation was not watching us and viewing us, neither were those who are on the internet. So we want to ask for those who are watching via the internet now, please support the ministry of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the building of a nation for our poor and suffering people make a donation there's a button there an opportunity for you to make a sacrifice we're asking you to please do it and to do it cheerfully for our mosques and study groups watching via the internet please begin to circulate the receptacles in your city and in your town we thank you in advance for your charity we thank you for your sacrifice we thank you for your support may Allah continue to bless each and every one of us as I turn you back over into the hands of the student national assistant minister to the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan brother minister Ishmael Mahal who will close us out in prayer. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Before we close with prayer, we want to extend our condolences to two families for their loss. The first uh, is uh, Sister Priscilla Muhammad, who many of the sisters here in Chicago are familiar with. And she helped uh, Mother Khadija with the, at the MGT factory, and uh, she made her transition this past, uh, over the weekend, actually Saturday night, her family is here. Brother Naeem from uh, Dallas, Texas, and the rest of his family, we want you to know that our prayers and our thoughts are with you, and we extend our condolences to the family of Sister Priscilla Muhammad. May Allah continue to bless you. The, the arrangements of the funeral will be this Wednesday at uh, 2 o'clock at 4050 Southwestern in the name of the funeral home? 5040 Western. And the name of the funeral home? Okay. All right. Well, those of you um, that would like to attend and pay your respects, it's 5040 Western. We have the information here at the mosque, so if you call, we can get you more information. Midwest Memorial. That's on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Also, we extend our condolences uh, to Sister Erlin, a beautiful, beautiful sister. It really uh, broke my heart to learn that she made her transition uh, last um, Wednesday, I think it was, and she was just with us. She came out to the mosque every Sunday and was 52 years a member of the Nation of Islam. 
and was a very devoted, dedicated, beautiful sister, 72 years of age, and those of us here at Moss Mariam uh, know her very well, and she will be missed. She, uh, the services for Sister Erlin will be at A.A. Rayner and Sons at uh, 318 East 71st Street. And that uh, service is also on Wednesday at 10 a.m. So we have a 10 a.m. and a 2 p.m. So our condolences as well go out to the family of Sister Erlin and her son, I believe, is also attending, could be over in the gym, okay? So life and death, they're, they're like twins, and we ask our last peace and blessings upon those that have passed on and upon the families and loved ones that they have left behind. So with that, let's close with prayer and thanking Allah for such a wonderful, wonderful day. I think it just is deserving. Just one more time, can we put our hands together for our beloved minister? What a wonderful, wonderful lecture, message. Yes, Sister Sandy is requesting that at the close of prayer, if all of the sisters that are seated in the uh, middle center sections could remain, uh, they want to get a photo, okay? Do you mind being in a picture? Okay, we want to get a photo of this. Thank you. And right after prayer, Sister Erica Muhammad. Brother Rashad's wife. Just because there won't be 20 Ericas coming up, so we want to make sure we have the right Erica. Okay? Let us close with prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment. Thee do we serve and thine aid we seek. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom your wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. Say he, Allah is one. Allah is he on whom we all depend. He begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Amin. May the peace and blessings of Allah go with you.